Almighty and awesome, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. Every day I can feel light up to the world every day. 
I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend There is beauty in what I can't understand Jesus, it's you Jesus, it's you Tell me he can't do it. We'll see cities in revival. 
as we get ready for Brother Russell to come and to preach to us tonight, Lord God. Help us to remember, Lord. Help us to remember all the miracles that you've done in our life. All the wonders, Lord Jesus, that have taken place in this church. So mighty and awesome, wonder-working God, wonder-working God, you ever stop believing, so, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Bless this time we have together, Brother Russell, as you come. Let's um, turn in our Bibles to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through 30. Brother, I, I think the whole band worked very hard, did such a great job today already. But I got to be honest, I was kind of hoping the mic wouldn't work. Because I wanted to show you I was going to sing just as loud without that mic working as if it was. I love worshiping and praising God with you all here today. It's so special what we have together. I'm just grateful that we hold ourselves to the high standard of the Word of God, that we're not going to settle for anything less than Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what Paul said a long, long time ago. That's all I want to know. That's all I want to talk about. That's all I want in my life. And I, I've thought about it off and on over the years. It doesn't really matter if the mic works, if it doesn't work, if I play the right note or the wrong note. It doesn't matter if I got to hear my favorite preacher or my least favorite preacher. If Jesus showed up, that's all that really mattered anyway. And we won't settle for anything less than have the presence of the Lord here. We won't settle. And I love that about our church. You know, and you know how we do that? We enter into his gates with thanksgiving, like the Bible says, into his courts with praise. My New Testament tells me that if I draw near to him, he will draw near to me. And I know of no better way to get close to Jesus than to just come in here and pour out my heart my soul, my mind, and even my strengths before him in praise. Acts 17, 24 through 30. It's a few verses. I know you're standing so patiently. Let's read. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped by men or with men's hands as though he needed anything. Since he gives to all life, breath, and all things, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. I know this is big stuff. Hold, just bear with me. A couple more verses. So that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. 
For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art or by man's devising, Sister Griggs. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Jesus, we've already prayed together. We've already opened our hearts and our voices, but God, one more time, Lord, I just want to ask, God, there's faith in you, alive and well in this house, God. Your spirit is here. Your word has been opened, Lord God. I pray that all these things would combine right now in the house of God and would bring life for somebody within earshot of this sermon tonight. I pray that you'd help me, God, to do a good job, that you'd help us here at the mission to do our part for each and every one of us has a part in this service, God, for we are the body of Christ. God, I pray, help us together in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless us today in Jesus' name. You may be seated if you'd like. There's this weird Latin or Greek phrase called Deus ex machina. Deus ex machina means God out of the machine. And uh, video gamers probably know it from somewhere else and other media outlets, but it comes from old Greek plays, you know, where they got up on stage and they wore costumes and they acted out scenes. Often they were tragedies. Occasionally they were comedies. And in those plays in the Greek times, pretty much every story was about their gods, their idol worship and all of that stuff. And at some point in, in many of the plays, they had this mechanism, a literal machine, either through a trap door in the floor or for some kind of crane, a god would just appear on stage and would change the story. The god out of the machine. It's a plot device that they used. It's kind of like what probably happens in a lot of our media today where the writers of the story get themselves into a pickle and now they don't know, they got their hero into a mess and they don't know how to get him or her out of the mess. And so now something crazy and unexpected needs to happen to bail them out or to change circumstances. Or as they write their way through the story, they realize, man, everybody in the audience is going to be super depressed. They're not going to want to watch this show. I need to change things up somehow, some way. And so in the very, very, very old days, they would bring a god out of the stage somehow with a machine. And the god would do something amazing or something funny to change the story. Today's sermon is about believing that God is somewhere in the machinery of this life of yours. Believing that whether it's going a a tragedy and it can't get any worse, or it's just some kind of comedy and it can't be any more ridiculous, believing that God is somewhere and just staying curious Be curious and look for God somewhere, somehow, to show up in the story of your life. God is there. We just sang it so powerfully and passionately. God, I believe. You're the wonder-working God. And you see, in order to really say that and to really feel it, you've got to be looking for Him. You've got to stay curious. Today's sermon is about staying curious. God, where are you? In the scene before me, I can't quite tell how, if it's going to go good or going to go bad, but I've got to believe that you are in here somewhere and you are going to do something good about what is going on. Our text said that God made all of us, every single one of us, And he established, he determined our boundaries and our times so that everybody in all of creation would seek for him. And the apostle here in the book of Acts describes it that we would grope for him like blind people or like people in the dark looking for God, even though he's not far from any one of us. God wants all people everywhere black and white and yellow and red and every shade in between, rich and poor, tall and short, 
fat and skinny, smart and not so smart. Every human being on this earth, God wants us to seek for him because the times of our ignorance, the apostle wrote, God overlooked for a time, but now he commands, he commands, God commands all of us, all of us, everywhere, not just here, not just in the United Pentecostal Church, not just at the mission, not just my family, not just my favorite saint, everyone, everywhere to repent. We had that wonderful exercise, that activity we did up here. Sorry, kids, you missed out. The adults had a good time without you. Oh, and we talked about how to get others, how do we get them plugged into this wonderful experience? Well, I would add to it, I would have been cheating, I would have tried to add to our list, stay curious and feed curiosity in everybody else around us because God is telling us in our text, he's been telling us our whole lives if we ever cared to listen. He's telling us he just wants us to be seeking after him, looking for him. Even if you're groping like you're blind and you can't find him, like you're trying to get to the fridge at three in the morning without turning the lights on so that you don't wake people up. He wants you to seek for him whatever way you may at be curious, and he's trying to tell you, and he's trying to tell me, everybody out there is curious too. Yeah. Yeah. They want to find him. Yeah. They're looking for this amazing God, this God out of the machine. We believe in the Lord. Yeah. We believe in his wonder-working love. We believe in his power and his miracles. We trust that God will do what he said he would do. We trust in the promises of Scripture. I was young and now am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. We believe in so many promises of scripture. We believe that God will do what he said he would do, but sometimes, and I've said this a lot here because this is me, this is my mind and my heart, God, I believe, please help my unbelief. We're looking for God to show up in this situation that we're in, whatever that may be. I'm not assuming that we're all having a bummer of a time trying to live for the Lord. I'm not assuming that at all. But in the worst of times, the best thing you could do is stay curious. God, you're here somewhere. You are here in mental illness. You are here in relationship struggles. You're here in my poverty. You're here in the big, big, big failure. I just failed in front of the world. You're here when I sinned and fell on my face. The man said in scripture, I could make my bed in hell and you are there. I've just got to stay curious and keep looking for where God is. God, you are here and you might not have shown up in this scenario yet, but you're fixing to show up. You're going to be the God out of the machine. You're going to pop up here and things will change for the better. I believe. God, help my unbelief sometimes. It's not always easy living for God. My Bible says, trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct my steps. It's hard. It's great to believe that, to have that as a memory verse and to go for it, but sometimes it's hard to say, lean not to my own understanding. That's kind of all I've got to work with is my own understanding, unless I belong to a church like this one. And then I have God's understanding with which to function by. I have preachers and teachers and brothers and sisters who will say, don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Don't, don't just trust your feelings on the matter when it's time to make a decision, because your feelings, you could feel like killing your loved one today. That doesn't mean you should do it. I need sometimes to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. My ways are not his ways. Thank God my thoughts are not his thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are much, much better than my thoughts. I'd like to add right now, you know, sometimes I just want somebody to get a good old-fashioned beat down. Sometimes I do. They got it coming. And every once in a while, I think I should take it upon myself. I'm not a violent man, so I I meant that metaphorically, the beatdown thing. 
Even if I was a violent man, not very good at it. So let's just not even bother. But my point is, every once in a while, I want to dish out the punishment. That's not doing what that scripture says. That's me leaning on my own understanding. You know, God's understanding of that is, vengeance is mine, says God. I will repay, says God. And guess what? I might be able to do damage to your body. I might even be able to mess up your mind a little bit. But God can take your body and your soul. He's got your number. He knows where you are and he knows where you're going to be. And he can make sure that's where you end up. So you know what? Sometimes it's just best, I'm going to let God handle this one. He knows better than I know. That was free. I am excited, Pastor, about that devotion you talked about, God's Word for Life coming up, about us getting involved in that as a church. I hope you think really honestly, prayerfully think about getting involved. Don't let money be in the way. What was it, four bucks to get in? Four ninety nine. I'll pass the hat too if it helps. Talk to any of us. We'll get you in on I'm excited about it. And it's got me thinking about Bible study. It's got me thinking about one of my favorite forms of social to- torture called Search for Truth Bible Study, where you'd get into lesson one and you'd stay there for four months on the very first lesson. You wouldn't even finish lesson one because you'd stay there. But you know why I did that so much? Brett, do you know why I did Matthew chapter 5 for like 12 years with the youth class? Because of curiosity. Because like I talked about a little while ago about being hungry and thirsty for the things of God. I couldn't help but want to dig in there. And when I started teaching people who were also curious, I got hooked on it. I couldn't find anything else in this world. And I've lived some life outside of the kingdom. There is nothing like pouring the things of God into somebody's life who is curious like I'm talking about, who wants to see him, who wants to find him and know him the way he is. They ask weird questions, questions I don't have the answers for, but man, now I want to find out. I get hooked on that thing. I can't wait until we get into God's word for life because we're not just going to teach a lesson at four. We're going to go home and with our families or if you're just yourself like I might be, you know, probably so far anyway, you're going to just get in there and on Monday you're going to still be looking at it and on Tuesday you're going to stay involved in it and you're going to be staying curious. You're going to be investigating what was it? Why was that important on Sunday? How can I apply that to my life? How can I get that plugged into where I go to work or where I go to school or the friends that I'm trying to reach? There is a way for them to hear this and I'm going to look into this until I find not just some something for me, but a way to share what I heard pastor teach at four o'clock. I'm going to find a way to share what I heard whoever teaches it at four o'clock. I'm going to have it all week long. And before the week is out, I've been given enough time with my own curiosity to find someone else who's curious too. God the times of men's ignorance, he's done dealing with that. He wants everybody, everywhere to repent. He wants them all to see the way, to see the truth, and to see the life. Stay curious, folks. Seek for God. Find ways to investigate the word again. Find ways Use God's word for life. Use anything else. I don't care what you use. Find something that will help you rekindle your curiosity again. Get curious. Stay curious. God's riches are unsearchable. His wisdom is beyond our discovery. Eye hasn't seen. Ear hasn't heard. You haven't even begun to imagine the things that God has prepared for those who love him. You just got to get curious. Things might be great in your life right now. Well, guess what? They can get better. God is not done in your life. If he were, he'd have taken you home. Wherever you're at, it can. And God wants it to be better. Just stay curious. Dig into it. Dig into this life with Christ. Dig into your circumstances. Challenge God about the call of God he gave you. Be, stay, get curious. Oh, man. You ever hear the phrase, curiosity killed the cat? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to do it because half of you probably already heard anyway. I went downstairs today, said hi to the teachers. 
Yeah, see, they're laughing already. And somebody, dear sweet sister, said, hey, hold out your hand. I want to spray you with this thing. And immediately I was like, this is a bad idea. Can you guess what I did? I sure did. I held out my hand. And I got sprayed with the stickiest glue I have ever run into. And then she goes, put your hands together. And I go, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, yeah, I didn't do that, though. I did this, and I went, oh, no. My hand almost, I almost had to preach like a presidential candidate the whole night with my hand glued together. You know why I did it? Curiosity. I'm like, why not? Yeah, well, see, and Brother Whitney came up and made sure he said, do this. He wanted to make sure I got at least most of the glue off my hand before church started because it might have been distracting. And that's probably why people say curiosity killed the cat. But that phrase wasn't worn, wasn't it, when it was first coined, when it was first said, wasn't intended to, to, to squash people's curiosity. We changed it to mean that. It actually comes from Shakespeare. And it wasn't curiosity that killed the cat in the days of Shakespeare. It was care. Care killed the cat. Not the kind of care where you give each other a hug and cry with them. But back in those days, the word care meant worry or anxiety. Care is what kills the cat. Now, if you do dumb things like I do and glue your hands together, you may end up in a bad situation, and then curiosity might just kill the cat. That's not the curiosity I'm talking about today. I'm talking about just be curious in regards to your God. Where are you? Where are you? You see, in in the old Bible studies, and hopefully some new ones, all of Scripture is about being curious and seeking after God. Ever since the beginning, God came along, and he formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils, does this sound familiar to anybody? The breath of life, and man became a living soul, a living being. And ever since then, he had a relationship with mankind. And he spent time with that man in the garden. He walked with him and he talked with him in the garden in the cool of the day. But many of you know this, right? Man goofed that up and fell away from that relationship. And so now God had to make another way. I'm trying to do a fast forward right through all of the Bible, basically. God made another way. And he said, this is the way, walk in it. This is how you're going to find a relationship with me. It'll never be as good as it was because you messed that one up, Adam and Eve. But you can still have salvation and grace. And one day when you are called home, you will be with me in paradise forever. But this is what you have to do. But man, as if you've read your Bible, you'll find did not follow that way. They left that way too. So God had to become the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody's getting in without coming through me. And all that whole story from beginning until now, this is still being written. We're part of that great story of God. It's about us seeking after him. He's seeking for him, looking for him. Like the man said way, way back at the beginning of the Old Testament, oh, that I knew where I might find him. And then you'd see in the prophets where the prophets say, God told me to tell you this. God said, you will find me if you seek for me with all your heart. And I can fast forward again to the New Testament where Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. If I'm the way, you've got to be looking for me. Jesus is telling everyone, I am the way. Look for me. Stay curious. Look for where Jesus is in any situation. Find a way to recapture your curiosity. Find a way to spread that into the lives of others. I heard a testimony about somebody who wouldn't tell their friends where they went on the weekends because it was church. Just heard this recently. And the friends were going nuts trying to figure out where does this person go on the weekends. And finally, because they got bullied and badgered by their close friends, they said, oh, fine, I go to church. And that person who found out 
came to church. That's not the way I would recommend witnessing to your friends, guys. Like, I'm going to keep it secret, and I'm going to try to make you curious by not telling you. But I guess it worked that one time. Curiosity might kill the cat. But anxiety and worry and care will kill the cat. Don't be worried. Don't be so full of care for the things of this life that you can't have curiosity. Well, what would happen if I go ahead and tell them about the things of God? What would happen if I just decide to live my life for Christ out loud in this situation? What would happen? We, we often assume the worst will happen, and maybe it will. But you never know until you try. You never know until you stay curious. Stay engaged in the process because my Bible is so full of these wonderful promises. And I can't help but think that many of them are connected to my willingness to put it on the line. These signs, pastor said it, these signs will follow them that believe. And I think that comes from the fact that somebody's just going to be brave and courageous and honest and silly. And okay, I know it's probably going to go bad, but I guess I'll give it a try. Who knows how it's going to go? Oh no, my hands got glued together. You've got to just give it a shot. You've got to just stay curious. You don't know that God might just show up and do a miracle in that situation. The God is, that I know is the God who's willing and ready and waiting to just pop out of the machine at any time and show a miracle and show that he's on your side. But he's waiting for you and he's waiting for me to be on his side first. I've got to be on his side. I've got to stand up for Jesus and he'll get off his throne and he'll stand up for me. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of us use whatever resources the church provides and whatever imagination we can conjure up to just share the good news with people. I talked about recently about being hungry and thirsty and about getting hungry. Well, add to that, get curious. Be curious. Stay curious. Take out your magnifying glass and investigate. Look through the scriptures. Searching the scriptures daily, those noble people at Berea were. They searched the scriptures daily to see. Why would they do that? Because they were curious. They had a curiosity. They were going to find, is Jesus in this? Well, if he is, I want to find him. I want to find Jesus in this. Our text said... He's everyone's God, the creator and the sustainer of all life. I read, we read those six, seven verses together because the man of God was standing in a place, Brother Bodwin covered this a while ago, standing in a place of learning, of smarts and scholarly research, a place filled with gods but not having a place for the name of the unknown God. I think Brother Hinton mentioned this one too. And he stood there and he looked around and said, you guys are groping like blind people in the dark. And I see it. I see a curiosity. I see a hunger. I see a desire to connect with the one who gave everybody life. God gave us all this life. And he said, he was brave enough to say, we're all his kids. He didn't just say, you know, my fellow Hebrew Christians are his kids. He didn't just say, you know, Peter and the rest of the crew hanging back at Jerusalem are his kids. He didn't just say Silas, who, you know, I've hung out with and sung in prison about this, are his kids. He said, all are his kids. Just like you have said, God who made all of us, the, we are the children of God. He wasn't saying they were all saved. He wasn't, he wasn't saying that we're all born again of the water and the spirit like that. He was saying, we're all his we're all his offspring we're all the fruit of God's creation we're all the ones formed from the dust of the ground we're all coming from the same dirt we're all coming from the same darkness we're all coming from the same place of sin in need of the same salvation we're all human beings and we're all groping blindly in the dark for the creator we're all doing our best to get by in this life and he's saying I know the way to him you've just got to look for him and he wants you to be looking and he's promising he's looking right back just as hard he's reaching out to us and his hand is stretched out still he's not obvious right away and that's why we've got to be persistent about this and brother 
We've got to be consistent with this. We've got to stay on task and stay living for the Lord. We've got to live to the standards that God has given us to live because people who are looking for him, they can't seem to see him. But I have found him. And if I move the target, it makes it harder for them to find him. So I've got to stick to it. I've got to stay with it. And I've got to be persistent. And if I try to reach somebody I care about, if I build a relationship with somebody to share the gospel with, I've got to stick with it. I've got to remember, my text was explaining it to me. Our text was explaining it to us tonight. Everybody's out there trying to find him. They really are. Part of them at least because God has made it that way. That people would have built into them somewhere some curiosity. I've just got to keep looking for it. So I'm telling you, church, be curious and look for God in your situation. And in doing so, I want you to add Be curious and look for God in their situation. Look for God where they're living, in their system of beliefs, wherever they are. If you've got a relationship with them, then God puts you there. You're part of where God is in their situation. Maybe you're the machine. Maybe you're the trap door that God will spring out of into their life. Maybe you're the crane that will drop them through the ceiling like those wonderful friends did in the New Testament. You might be the machine for the God who comes out of the machine. You've got to stay curious. He said something, though. He said, God is not in temples made with hands. And God isn't a God of silver and of gold or any craftsmanship, craftsmanship, excuse me, that we can craft. He is a God that's that's far above and far outside of all of it. He's bigger than all of it, and he's hard to perceive. God doesn't want any images made out of him because he defies description. He is the God. There is no other. There isn't anybody like him. There's nothing that compares to him. There's nothing as strong as he is, nothing as powerful or as wise as he is. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything in them. He is God alone. Beside him, there is no God. God. There was no God before him, neither will there be a God coming after him. He is it. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He was the first. He'll be at the last. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is God, and he doesn't need anything you can do with your hands. And that's why you've got to go outside of your understanding. You've got to go outside of your own craftsmanship. You can't make it on your own. You can't make a miracle. You can't raise the dead with your own two hands. You can't do it, but God can, and he wants to. And that's the God that I believe in. That's the God that I love with my own own hands I can make a relationship with another person with my own hands I can earn money with my own hands I can bring comfort and I can bring healing to somebody with my own hands I can do that but I cannot bring them salvation I cannot give them the Holy Spirit of God I cannot give them a revelation of the oneness of God I cannot give them a miracle of healing I can't do that what I can do though is I can stay curious I can be riled up about Jesus in their life I can want to see him show up in their life, and I can welcome them into their life. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, I give to you. And all they did was say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And that guy got up, and he did more than walk. That's what I have in Jesus, and I couldn't do that with these hands, and I still can't, and I can't buy it with money, and I can't live holy enough to see it happen, but I will do my best, and I will stay curious, and make Maybe somebody will be willing to look at what I've got to offer. If we just repent and seek after the Lord. That was the end of our text, right? He wants everybody everywhere, everybody everywhere, everybody everywhere repent. If I'll just do that, if I will just seek for him, like the scriptures say, the sky beyond the sky is the limit. What staying curious does is it gives us power. It gives us strength. It gives us endurance, Sister Griggs. It gives us the ability to seek and to save those who are lost. One of my favorite memory verses, and I've said this before, forgive me if you're sick of hearing it, is Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. 
What a great verse. But it's only great if I stay curious. Because it's just words. If I don't look for God to be working all things together for my good. Oh, God. I, this isn't a great situation in my life, my health, whatever. Or maybe, God, this is a challenge. You've just asked me to do something that's way bigger than I am. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Oh, but I know that all things work together for my good. If, if, if I love him, if I am the called according to, if I'm living according to his purpose, then I can believe and I can know that all things, so then, but the trick is, is I need to stand on top of that scripture and I need to seek for God in this situation. God, you said that you wouldn't put on me more than I can bear. That's another scriptural promise. I got to stand on the promises of scripture. And God, where are you in this? Where are you in this situation? You're not going to send me out here to follow my face. You didn't give me the spirit of God so that I would sin and fail and go to hell and be dead forever. You gave me your spirit as a promise that I would be in heaven forever. You gave me your spirit so that I would have power to be a witness to you in all the world. You gave me life and that more abundantly. And so I've got to seek after you. I've got to be curious, that's what curiosity does. When I say stay curious, I'm saying a whole lot. I'm saying look for Jesus in every situation. Are you wondering where he is now? Would this preacher shut up so I can get to it? Maybe that's what you're doing. Look for Jesus. Was he in the song? Was he in the prayer before the song? Was he in the preaching? Have you, are you still looking for him? He might just be at the altar. I think so many times we blow it on a Sunday because we didn't stay curious. We go home and go, man, that was a dud. Maybe you were supposed to hang in there and look for him. Look for him. He said, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. That's what curiosity does. I believe him, but I could start to worry and care, not curiosity, kills the cat. Instead, I've got to stay curious I've got to stop thinking about the worries. Remember I said this a while back, folks. Squish those negative thoughts. Squish the ants. I've got to stop it. I've got to look for Jesus in that. As soon as I start doing what I heard Sister McAllister once say, as soon as I start doing that sinking thinking, I've got to stop that. I've got to look for Jesus here. Jesus is not swirling around the toilet bowl with me. Jesus is above all this mess. I've got to look for Jesus, not for my worries. God works in mysterious ways, we used to say. And I've stayed away from saying that a lot, Pastor. You probably have too. Because, you know, when people are suffering or struggling or confused or scared or lonely or lost, telling them that God works in mysterious ways isn't super comforting. But it's true. And so maybe what I'm going to add is stay curious. Dig out your spiritual magnifying glass and put on your dear stalker Sherlock Holmes hat and look for Jesus in that situation. I don't understand. Why would God let this happen? I don't know, but if you get curious and if you stay curious, you'll find out. There's that old, old saw, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we'll tell the story how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. We might not understand right now, but if we'll stay curious, if we'll investigate, if we'll look in there, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The call tonight, guys, is for us to seek for him. And I'm looking at a room of people, you have received the Holy Spirit, many of you. Many of you have repented of your sins that first time and have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. God has blotted out. He's washed it away. The slate was clean. Many of you have got a life in Christ already, but you've got to stay curious. And so I think every single one of us here in this place could come up here and could pray at this. We call this an altar. It's a place of sacrifice. That's why we call it an altar. It's a place of prayer and commitment. 
and connection to Jesus. That's why we call it an altar. And every single one of us could come because God is telling you today, one way, shape, or form, I hope, I pray, to seek for him, to stay, to get, to be curious, to investigate, where are you, Lord? Maybe the prayer you pray tonight is the difference for your kids, for your spouse, for your parents, for your friends, for the, you've been trying forever to get this witness off the ground with so-and-so. Maybe it's something in your own noodle. Maybe it's something, God, I don't know how you're going to provide it. Even though you say you provide all my needs according to your riches and glory. Get curious. Look for God in prayer. Pray until you see God start to do something about it. And you may not understand what he's up to right now, but I promise if you'll stay curious, if you'll stay committed, if you'll stay connected to it, if you will get a hold of Jesus, and look for him in any of these situations in the ones I couldn't even begin to imagine in your life you will find him I'm calling the church to seek for the Lord if you will look for him he promised that you would find him if you're confused if you're frustrated look for Jesus be curious he will show up in that situation is it hard for you to see Jesus in whatever's going on in your life be curious look for Jesus he'll show up he may not change what's going on in your life but he will be there with you all through what's going on you've just got to look for him are you asking for the guidance of God in your life seek for him be curious Tonight, as I call the church to pray, you could stand with me right now if you like. As I call the church to pray, I remind you of the words of Jesus Christ. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be be opened. Every one of us has something we could ask Jesus for. Every one of us is looking for a little bit something more. Every one of us wishes and prays for an open door. Then you could ask, and you could seek, and you could knock. You see, the thing about that Deus ex machina that is so interesting to me. Why I keep saying it is because it makes me sound smart. But the thing about it that's so interesting to me is that when the God of that play would show up, the story would change. It looked like an impossible situation for our hero. He or she was toast. It was game over. But then his God or her God showed up and it all turned around. And I'm telling you, maybe what it takes for you or for me is to be curious and to look for the real and the only God of heaven and earth. He will show up and he can and he will turn it all around. He could turn a tragedy into a victory. In fact, that's what he means to do. He wants to take death and he wants to turn it into life. He wants to take sickness and turn it into healing. He wants to take sin and blot it away and replace it with salvation. He wants to change the story. Would you come would you come and bring him out in your situation? Invite the Lord to show up. Seek him while he may be found. Oh God, I ask tonight that you'd show up here in a special way. God, that you'd be here with my brothers and my sisters. God, today is a day of celebration and salvation. Today, God, is a day of healing and blessing and power and promise. Here today, Lord, I pray that, God, we would get curious and we would stay curious until we find you, Lord Jesus. Show up in our prayer today. Show up in our prayer on Monday. Show up, God, in our life this week in a surprising way, Lord God. I want to look for you at the job. I want to look for you in my family. I want to look for you, Lord, in the impossible situations. I want to look for you in the challenge that you set before me, God. Because, Lord, you want one to put a thousand to flight. You want two to put ten thousand to flight. Jesus, I want to pray that we'd stay curious in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. Help us.
where our hope and peace and joy are found. Come taste and see, we've been summoned by the King. Enter in and place your feet on holy ground. Come one, come all, to the presence of our God. Where our hope and peace and joy are found.
second here.
mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Lord, we're holding on tonight. We're holding on. We're waiting for you. You're moving in this place, Lord. You're so good. Your presence in this place tonight has been so strong, so powerful, Lord. So thankful, Lord Jesus, to be part, to be part of a family, Lord. This church is a family. It's your family. And I just pray that you would you would help us to continue to be one body. Help us to continue, Lord, to to be one body but moving as individual members into our communities, to be examples, to be consistent in the way that we live so that we can reach the lost, Lord. We are the mission. Help us to go out and to be the mission, to reach the lost, Lord Jesus. So thankful. Help us to come here, to become equipped for the working of the ministry so we can go back out there and be the ministry, Lord. So mighty and awesome. Thank you for such a, a strong move in this place tonight, Lord. Sometimes it takes us just, just holding on just a little bit longer, Lord. Just being curious, Lord, and just waiting to see, Lord, what are you going to do? What are you going to do tonight? What are you going to do in my life? What are you going to do in my family's life? What are you going to do in the church? So thankful, Lord Jesus, that you're a wonder-working God affirms my faith in you, Lord, every, every day. Thank you for this time, this opportunity we've had to gather together. Lord, as we go back out this week and, and we share the good word and, and we come back next Sunday, Lord, for our family Christmas dinner. I'm excited, Lord Jesus, to see the, the family together next week, Lord. Thank you for this time and bless the rest of this night as we go home and help us to keep carrying this the spirit throughout the week, Lord, to not just leave it here, but to bring it with us through Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday back to next Sunday, Lord. Help us remember to do those family devotions, Lord Jesus, to keep that pulse check, Lord, so we know we're on the right track. Thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for moving in this place and blessing us here tonight. In Jesus' name.